You typically create large-scale installations. How have you fused this aesthetic into fine jewelry? Well, I think that uh, large-scale uh, sculptures or installations or any other kind of artwork um, is no different from um, working in a, in, a, in a jewel scale because everything, I mean, whatever really, what really matters is the, um, the concept, the idea behind the work, the way how you approach whatever you want to be. So, the scale problem is most of all a mental scale problem. And when you really know what you want to do, independent from what you want to do, you won't have any scale problem. It's just a matter of attitude. It's a mental thing. Which two pieces from the collection do you feel represent your style as an artist? Wow, that's a tricky question. I would say that uh, among the six or seven bracelets I have done for Elisabetta, um, I don't see any differences in between them. What I see is just different moods, uh, different... Uh, it's all about the curiosity and the enthusiasm on doing these bracelets. I felt at a certain point that I was, uh, uh, I was so much absorbed into doing these uh, jewels that I start making variations some of them um, uh, have together these iron and the gold some others are just gold process have been a little bit more rough in some of them a little bit more subtle in others but I would say that they are all but one piece it's a one jewel that I have done what were the challenges involved in designing jewelry? Well, most of all, the challenges of uh, designing jewelry have to do with the fact that I have never done it. Well, more precisely, I have done it almost 15 years ago uh, for a friend who also had a show well, um, to exhibit jewels made by artists. But I never, I never went back. And now when Elizabeth asked me to do it, uh, I felt somehow, in the beginning I didn't want to do it. Because, to be honest, and as I said to her, uh, I'm not much inclined to jewelry. But then I thought the challenge was so, uh, you know, so precise, it was so tough that I could not possibly turn my back. So I decided to do it. And uh, what really, uh, what remains from this is in fact the, um, the achievement of a new thing in my practice as an artist. That what, that's what really matters to me. Your work as an artist bears architectural motifs and references to structure. Are there pieces in the collection that also bear these styles? If yes, could you please describe a couple? In fact, all of them do, because as I said before, it's something that really has to do with the, the, the attitude how, with, with, with which you approach the, the work. So, working... Uh, it's a lot of handwork on, uh, in doing uh, a, a jewel and there's a lot of handwork also doing a sculpture and in fact I don't see much difference between one and the other it's maybe just a, a, a question of scale as we spoke about before the thing is that it's the, the way how you deal with materials the way how you approach different materials the fact that you don't want to follow any uh, patterns of behavior that you might have understood as the typical way to approach jewelry. I'm not worried about it. I did these jewels as, as if I would do a large-scale sculpture as well.
It must be incredibly exciting, designing jewelry, working with new materials, a completely new context. What did you learn in the process? How will that influence your artistic work going forward? Well, you know, one doesn't stop learning, either from the process of doing art or jewelry or just strolling down the street and paying attention to whatever happens around you. So, uh, the thing that I learned is, most of all, the most important thing is that one, I, myself, I should never be closed to new challenges and I should be always able to maintain my curiosity. Curiosity is the main tool, is the most important instrument for an artist. So, in the beginning I didn't feel like if I want to do jewels, in the end I was pretty much happy I have done them. So I learned this, I learned to be curious. You refer to the process as vague and yet entangling eroticism, as if bending, twisting, welding was a caress. In what ways does it feel different creating jewelry to contemporary art? Well, when you create a, uh, when you we paint a, 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 when you do, when you do a painting or a sculpture or a drawing, in fact, um, to be honest, we all know that artists, first of all, they work for themselves. I also believe in this. When I'm in the studio working. I'm working for myself. I don't have any, um, any intentions uh, regarding anyone in particular or people in general when I do a painting. With doing a, a bracelet or any other piece of jewelry, it's slightly different. There's a subtle nuance because for some reason you always think or consider about some person, some inexistent person that would wear the jewels you do. So that's the main difference. You have a kind of a, a vague image, in my case, a vague image of a vague woman which would use my jewels. That's the big difference, is the, the, the human factor. There is no human factor when you paint a painting. There is a human factor as a destination for the jewels. Do you feel jewelry can be considered as contemporary art? Well, I don't want to be cynical, but uh, after Duchamp and his urinal piece, we have a large array of objects and circumstances as well that can be considered as contemporary art. Certainly, certainly uh, a jewel done by a contemporary artist is a piece of contemporary art. But what we should ask ourselves is how efficient, how productive, in fact, is this idea of contemporary art. Personally, I think we should get rid of this. It's just another empty label. It's about art and that's it. Period.